Yes, I know what you're all thinking. Why am I out fishing in these conditions instead of sat at home in front of the log fire with a nice brew in my hands? But just check it out, it's just beautiful. I love fishing in conditions like this and this is a great time to catch a snow carp because it's early March and I was on this lake last week and I managed to catch a couple of fish. So there's a really good chance that I might get on the fish again today and I could be holding a snow carp, which would be just absolutely perfect. But before we get myself set up, what I want to do is take you around this lake and show you the different swims. We're at Esne's Quarry in Wolverhampton. If you think of Wolverhampton, most people think of the black country and industrial areas and stuff like that. But out here where this lake is located, it is absolutely beautiful. It's surrounded by open fields. It's nice and quiet, apart from the geese at the moment, which are all congregating on the islands and getting ready to mate. But this lake is just wonderful. It really, really is. So as a day ticket lake, it's definitely going to be very poppy when it opens in a few weeks time. But uh, for now, because I can feel that the snow's starting to fall again, what I want to do is go and get my gear. And in the meantime, while I push that barrel around to the swims where I'm going to be fishing, we'll have a look around the lake. I'll show you the different swims and you can get an idea about what this place is all about. are out, bivvies up, kettle's been on and I've had a brew so I'm now sitting back and just enjoying what winter carp fishing is all about. Now it goes without saying that when you're fishing in these kind of conditions obviously you do need to be comfortable so I've got myself a good shelter up, loads of space, this is a HQ1 man, dual layer, nice and big bivvy. I've also got the right clothing on, I'm not wearing a great deal, I've actually just got a t-shirt on, a hoodie and then I've got the ripstop thermal camo I can't even speak because of the cold weather. Thermal camo jacket on, and then I've just got a pair of the salopets. And on my feet, these are a pair of Carrymore, I think they're called snow boots. I've had them for quite a while now. And the one thing I found about getting the right footwear is if you've got a tight fitting boot, a tight sock on, that keeps your feet really cold. Whereas a loose fitting boot and some loose socks on, nice thick pair of loose socks maybe if you're a size 11 go for a size 12 same with the boot something a little bit bigger than what you'd normally wear that keeps your feet nice and warm so there you go everything's happy all i've got to do now is sit back and wait for the carp Esnes is 18 acres. It's very, very different to what's out here at the moment, especially in this area. It used to be a sand and gravel quarry. So we've got, we've got depths of up to 40 feet at the deep end. It's roughly about 600 fish. Fish up to 42 pound, that's the biggest one. There's a handful of 30s and the rest are like big doubles, low 20s, and yeah. you, but they're all growing. It's been run as a syndical war for a long while, hasn't it? And I've seen some of the fish that are in it. There's some beautiful footy scales in there, aren't there? Yeah, I've tried to get a good mix of fish, so there's something for everyone. But believe it or not, a batch of fully scales that are stocked are really flying. Yeah. And some of those fish are only stocked at £1.4, right. and they're up to big 20s now, some of them. Mate, it's opening for day ticket very soon. Exactly what day is it opening? 5th of April is our opening day. Bookings are on the Go Catch app. You can book for opening day, there's still plenty of spaces at the moment. 
and then book right through 24 hour sessions minimum yeah but stop as long as you want i am getting contacted for lads wanting to come down and do whole lake exclusive bookings right now to get one of those contact me personally either on my facebook or my instagram okay ed matthews and i'll i can sort you out a price depending on the how long you want to stay you can pay 25 pounds for two rods yeah when we open or it's 28 pounds for three rods yeah and there's most of the swims it's margin fishing because it's so deep it drops yeah. down really quickly so nobody's going to interfere with you are they it's, no no it's a fantastic water just to watch the fishing as well with it going clear yeah don't get me wrong there's times when you get a bit of algae and it gets colored well a lot of the time it's like tap water yeah is, is that far end down there is that the shallows yeah so that's the shallower end yeah so there's a point just down here where the lake bed comes up but it does drop off again yeah a little bit down that end but the fish really get everywhere you know in the summer when the weather's different to what it's like now yeah they'll follow the wind a bit but th with there being lots of features lots of islands and stuff there's never all the fish in one area yeah you know they're moving around in groups and stuff yeah, yeah. and with the depths big beds of bait have worked well on air with lots of smell and lots of stink and stuff then if you do get i find if you do get the depth slightly wrong mm -hmm. if you've got something there to draw them down miles away from give the fish them a going purpose yeah, yeah, yeah to get yeah. dropped down on it it makes a it makes a big difference it's set in beautiful environments nice and quiet and there's so much space as well between the swims i think this is going to offer something a little bit different to, yeah. to, to what all the other day ticket walls do in this area so it's very accessible as well you know we're only 10 minutes from the m6 yeah five minutes off uh, junction one of the m54 yeah. so it's very accessible from wherever you're coming from really yeah. good times mate exciting yeah. times i'm sure it's going to be a big success for you mate but uh, there you go that's a nice little bit of insight from ed i'll let you crack on with a bit of work mate yeah I've got some snowballs ready to love <laughs> do you want a brew actually do you want a, do you want a drink or anything i'm but... all right mate i've got to crack on all right then, mate good to see you pal cheers boys. cheers ed It's actually sleeting now, so uh, a lot of the snow has turned to slush, but this is the swim I've chosen. Not exactly sure what it's called, but it's on an island. I've had to come across a bridge to get onto it, but there's two swims on this island. There's the first one, which is where I am, and then there's another swim on the end of it down there to the left. But there's a look at the rods, and it's the same swim I fished last week, so I know a little bit about it. This lake is very deep goes down to about 40 foot in place it's certainly out in front of here it does so the key on a deep lake like this is to find the depth that the fish are at so last week i staggered the rods at different depths had them at 20 foot 30 foot and 40 foot and i ended up getting three bites and they all came from the same depth which is on the left rod aimed towards where the house is and what you've got there is a little step a little bit of a ledge where it goes from about 28 foot down to 30 foot and that's where I had all my bites from, exactly the same spot. So that's what I've done today, is put all three of my rods at exactly the same distance out and the same depth. And you can see just by looking at the lines that they're entering the water at roughly the same spot. So I know they're pretty much in the same sort of area. And I've just staggered them across the swim, not too far apart, probably about 20 metres apart, something like that. So I've got a decent idea that the fish are in that area. And from talking to Ed, he's been telling me that this swim is a decent winter swim. So I know from last week there was carp down here. I'm expecting them to still be here today. Although the conditions today are obviously a lot different, but on a deep water like this, the chances are that a bit of rain, a bit of sleet, a bit of snow, cold temperatures are not really going to affect it too much. It tends to be on the shallower lakes where when you get a bit of snow and ice melt going into the water that the fish will switch off. But on a deep lake like this, they know the light levels are right, they know that spring's on its way, they will be mooching around for a bit of food. So there's a good chance we could end up with a snow carp today if I'm lucky. Now all three rods are on exactly the same tactic. They're fishing for one bite at a time, which is just using a bug wafter on each rod. And then all I've done is just bombed out a couple of handfuls or thereabouts, a mix of pellets, some bug boilies and some sweet corn. And then I've doused them all in some liquid bug, which is gonna add a lot of smell to the water. Ed's told me that these fish really do like some smell out there. So I've really gone to town with the liquid. I've really doused the freebies in that and just bombed them out. So I'm hoping that smell, fish at the right depth, does me a bite or two. You can see how much snow we've had just by the 
little drifts around my bivvy. There's some weight on there as well. I remember a few years ago when I was using a, um, well, I won't name the bivvy, but it wasn't one of Avid's and I had a bit of snow on top of the bivvy and the bivvy ended up breaking. The poles at the front of the bivvy snapped because there was so much weight on them. And that's got some weight on it, I tell you. Yeah, it's proper winter wonderland <laughs> at the moment. Who'd have thought this would be in March? Here's a good little tip for fishing in these kind of conditions. At the moment, the temperature is just above freezing, so that rod setup you see there is working fine because the snow is very soft. But tonight, the temperature is going to go down to about minus four, so you can guarantee that that snow that's at the back of the buzzer and the little bit that's on the indicator head is going to freeze up solid. Now, we might be in early March, but the fish are still in their winter mode, so bites might be quite sensitive, so I need to make sure that the indication is working perfectly. And when I walk the dog in about an hour or so's time, I'm just going to nip back to the car and get a bottle of WD-40, which I'll then apply to the back of that buzzer head and on the indicator to stop them from freezing. Now, I won't put too much on them, just a smidgen, because I'm always conscious of products like that, tainting my gear just in case they repel carp. Now, you don't have to use WD-40, you can also use things like Vaseline or anything which will stop the freezing and it doesn't always work i'll say that because i've known temperatures go so low and the snow is so continuous there's too much of it but at least if i put a little bit on there it can help reduce the chances of me not knowing when i've got a bite in these kind of conditions I'm just going to give these chest waders a quick plug because they are brand new and they went out to the average stockist only the other day. These are the 420 d camo waders and I can hear you all saying they're just another pair of waders. Well, they are and they aren't. The problem with waders is they're all made from very hard material which makes them difficult to get into, especially in weather like we've got today. They either fall over, flop sideways or are so hard you can't fold them down to make them easy to step into when you've got a fish. With the 420Ds however, these are made from a soft rubber which stays soft in cold temperatures and they have a low cut to the boot which makes them a doddle to get into. They come with all the other standard features such as an inside pocket, adjustable drawstring, padded knees and seat section, branded straps plus the popular Avid camo design. They retail at $89.99 and currently they're only available in sizes 7 to 12. But if you want more info, as always, you'll find it at avidcarp.com. I don't know about you guys, but the older I get, the more I seem to be doing stupid things like what old people do. People like Briggsy, who's absolutely ancient. Um, this week's stupid thing that I've done, I hate Stilton cheese. I love cheese, and when I've gone shopping the other day, because I do my own shopping, my missus does her own shopping, it's just how we are, we just, um, she doesn't do the shopping. Um, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I, I do my own shopping anyway, and I buy, soups to put with me my vegetables when i'm cooking my dinner and because my main dinner virtually every evening when i'm on the bank is what's in here now which is whole wheat pasta with chopped vegetables and some soup and i buy all sorts of different soups but today i don't know why i bought this broccoli and stilton i hate stilton cheese and i saw the green packet and just bought it as thinking it was something a bit different and I opened the lid and smelt it and already my stomach's turning. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm going to manage it but it's the only soup that I've got left for this trip so it's either this or nothing. I can't eat just, well just, just I can't eat just pasta and vegetables. I've got to have something with it to give it a bit of moisture or whatever you call it. So I can assure you that not only looks horrible it actually smells horrible, so I'm probably going to end up going to the toilet this evening. Let's see what it's like. Mm. Definitely not my favourite. I'll manage it, I reckon. 
I probably won't end up in the toilet either, but I won't be buying it again, let's say that. Normally I buy either minestrone or what should I want to like? Pea and ham or vegetable soup or even tomato soup or cream of mushrooms. But I've seen this green one. I bet somebody I bet what's handy, somebody's put it on the um the ham and pea shelf and that's why I've I've picked it up because I'd never intentionally buy Stilton cheese, it's just foul. I don't know how anybody keeps it down. It's awful, it just smells horrible as well. But yeah, it's alright. I won't buy it again. Check that out. It's absolutely Baltic. And I'm up because we've had a bite. At half four this morning I was sitting up in bed checking out social media and I saw the remote light on me remote box come on but no bleep I thought what's that all about and a short while later I ended up having a drop back as well so I came out and had a look at it and the left hand rod was tight up against the buzzer everything had frozen up and the fish had gone through the other two rods but fortunately I managed to sort it all out we've got a lovely scaly mirror down there real nice fish not very big but an absolute beauty in conditions like this you can just see there's so much snow about and apparently it's going to snow a little bit more in a short while so it's going to be really nice photographs so i'm going to leave him down there for an hour until first life but yeah proper baltic conditions last month i was swimming in february lake water and this month we're catching carp in conditions like this but it's absolutely beautiful i love it wouldn't want to be doing anything else oh, it's so cold at the moment my teeth are chattering but we came for a snow carp and we've caught a snow carp it is proper baltic out here at the moment so i'm not going to be too long holding this fish but obviously we've not seen Esney's quarry in its full splendor so I'll definitely be back again to take another look at this fantastic water. But don't forget, it opens for day tickets very soon, beginning of April, and I'll definitely be back again. But for the time being, I want to get this fish back, get myself packed away, and get myself home into the warmth. Thanks for watching.